don't consist of how many cars or how many millions of naira and dollars you have in the bank account but it's how many lives you have touched every time god gives you a dream every time you have a dream there is a devil ready to stop your dream because every time god ordains a man the devil also ordains a man or a woman to stop that person For you to say no you kept the back of my father on the ground you will not keep my own back on the ground you pick your back from the ground wipe up the sand you say you stop my father but you will not stop me my father was poor but i will not be poor my father was an illiterate i will not be an illiterate by the partners and friends of Liberation TV. Hear me, Accra Ghana. I came to speak by divine revelation. It doesn't matter the pattern that is behind it. I came with a supernatural mandate. I came with a supernatural revelation. I came to speak over your life. I came to decree. I came to deal with the power in your father's foundation. I came to deal with the power in your mother's foundation. What stop your father will not stop you. What stop your mother will not stop you. What kill your brothers will not kill you. What your brother suffer, you will not suffer. What your mother suffered, you will not suffer. What your uncle suffer, you will not suffer. What your father suffer, you will not suffer. You will be, you are the one to break out. I say you are the one to break out. I say you are the one to break out. You are breaking out in the name of Jesus. I prophesy and I prophesy. The pattern is changing tonight. The curse is broken tonight. I manifest in your family. Your father's side are manifest. Your mother's side are manifest. I command every transgenerational curse. Every transgenerational oppression. By divine authority. By the blood that speak better things. Be exempted. Amen. Let's join Dr. Chris Okafor for today's message. Take your Bible. Hallelujah. Take your Bible quickly. I spoke to you about something yesterday. And by revelation of God's word, And by personal revelation and experiential knowledge, deeper things were revealed. And until we come to the knowledge and the understanding of some certain issues in our lives, that did not just start today, but dated back as far as our forefathers, then we might not really come out of, some, of certain things. So yesterday, I raised foundation concerning this, and I showed you a lot of things. And tonight, having understand and having seen that these problems they are there. And I've also seen that most of the time you have dealt with these issues, prayed, and yet, majority of times, these issues have defied your fasting and your prayers and your deliverance. But there is a way out. There is a way out. Stand to your feet as we read the word of God. It is your understanding in life that makes you a standing in your undertaking. Matthew chapter 22. Um, I begin from verse 23. 
I read. The same day came to him the Sadducees, which say that there is no resurrection, and asked him, saying, Master, Moses said, if a man die, having no children, his brother shall marry his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. Now there were with us seven brethren. The first, when he had married a wife, diseased, and having no issue, left his wife unto his brother. Likewise the second also, and the third, and unto the seventh. And the last of all, the woman died also. Therefore, in the resurrection, whose wife shall she be of the seven? For they all had her. For they all had her. They all did what? They all had her. Um, come with me. Uh, because of time, I'm trying to take the scriptures so that uh, when we proceed forward, nothing can uh, take us back. Second Kings um, chapter number four. Uh, I'll read from verse number one. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet unto Elisha, saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be born men. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, Thy handmaid had not anything in the house, save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shall pour out into all those vessels. And thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons, who brought the vessels unto her. And she piled out, and it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, Bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, there is not a vessel more, and the oil stayed. Then she came and told the men of God, and they said, Go, sell the oil, and pay thy debts, and leave thou and thy children of the rest. And leave thou and thy children of the rest. Father, thank you. Bless the reading of your word. Yesterday is gone. Tonight is another night. Do something new. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. Break yokes of the wicked. Let foundational powers be destroyed. And let every powers that have defied your children, that have defied their belief and their faith in you, let such powers be defied tonight. Let strange workings of your fingers be seen in this meeting tonight. And let sinners come to the kingdom of your dear son Jesus. And by extension, my viewers all over the world, may they become partaker of this grace. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Take your seat quickly. Um, I want to speak to you briefly about something 
breaking out from the wicked altars of my father's house by the blood. Now hear me, child of God. I'm going to try to raise a little foundation. Then I will open fire. Somebody say open. Okay. Uh, because whatever will not let you go, we go for you. Amen. The days of ignorance will be over. Amen. You see, the devil actually does not have power as we purpose. But the devil, the power of the devil is... The power of covenant that are put in in charge of ownership over you by some transactions of the fathers. Now hear me very well. Something happened here. According to Matthew chapter 22. I want to show you something so you understand what you are dealing with. Matthew chapter 22, the Bible said there were seven brothers. How many brothers? Seven brothers. Now, now, there was a strange pattern in this family. There was a strange pattern in this family. And something keep on happening. Now, when something keep on reoccurring, now, if you are not careful, are you hearing what I'm saying? What happened to your father will happen to you. If you are not careful, what stop your mother will stop you. If you are not careful, what stop your brother will stop you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You are just there saying, oh, no, this kind of thing will never happen to me. It is not by the reason of your own way of understanding or by smartness. You can be smart, but when it comes to the things of the spirit, the Bible said, though we dwell in the flesh, we do not war by the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of stronghold. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. In other words... Suffice me to say that it is the spiritual that controls the physical. The spiritual is the pregnancy that delivers the physical. It is the pregnancy, are you hearing what I'm saying? Pregnancy does not appear or just manifest until there is an intercourse between a man and a woman. Nobody just came into the planet Earth apart from the first Adam, Adam that was created. Because the only legal entry point to the planet Earth is the womb of a woman. Now, there were these seven brothers. And the first one got married to a woman. And on the process, he died without raising a child. Now, the second one, according to their law and traditions and culture, you know, most of the time, we, we misunderstand culture. When people say culture and tradition, a majority of what they call culture and tradition is actually idolatry. That is the serious confusion. But people perish because they lack knowledge. You see somebody giving his life to Jesus, and he said, in our village, we don't eat snails. And the person says he has given his life to Jesus. You say, why are you not eating this? He said, that is our tradition. That, that is our tradition. He says, that is our culture. Now, it's a serious problem. Now, what is culture when you have given your life to Jesus and all things have passed away and all things have become new? And he said, now all things are clean. And you say, no, our culture, no, I, I'm a Christian, but you know where we come from, it's our culture and our tradition that we don't eat, we don't eat snail or we don't kiss snake. Now, that is idolatry you are calling culture. Now, now look at what this family called culture. Look at the pattern in the family where idolatry was seriously mistaken or misrepresented for culture. Now, the first brother died. Now, because there is a tradition and custom that when a brother dies without raising up children, seeds, that by the reason of the culture and the tradition, the brother is supposed to take over. Marry the woman to raise children for the brother. Now, let's, let's, let's watch this tradition and culture. Now, the first man died after he died, the, culture, the, the tradition 
The custom says that the brother must take over. So the second one took over, married the same woman. Are you hearing me? And he died. Custom and tradition says because he didn't raise a seed, the third brother had to marry the same woman. The third brother married the same woman and he died also on the process. And the custom says another brother must take over. The brother also took over hey! and he died. My then it came the fourth one, married the woman also, and he also died. And the custom and tradition demands that the fifth one will also marry the brother, hey! I mean the wife of the brothers, to raise children for him. And eventually he also died. And the sixth one, ah, wicked. The sixth one also came because they say, "Hey, the tradition and custom says you must marry her to raise seed for your brother." They became blinded by custom and tradition, but it's not actually custom and tradition. It's a spirit. It's a demand of the spirit. Yes, sir. It's a spirit demand. It's a spiritual demand. So the sixth one went in for the woman, got married to the woman, and went through the same grave and died. And yet no child has been raised. My problem here is not with the sixth one, the six, the six that have died. My problem is with the last born, who was in kindergarten when they married the woman. What is the attraction over this man and the woman who is having white hair. Ah. What is the attraction? Hey. The one your first brother slept with. He killed your brother. Killed your second brother. Killed your third brother. Killed your fourth brother. Hey. And now he killed your fifth brother. And your sixth brother. And the custom and tradition says. You must also continue. Somebody say no more. No more. Not my head. Not my blood. And he married. Because he has right to protest. He would have said, hey, I would have loved to marry her, but the problem is this. This one is old. Because six people have married her. And if six people have married her, and yet they were not able to raise children, then there is, a killing, there is something killing us by the reason of the custom and tradition. What does custom and tradition do? They blind your eyes. They desensitize your sensitivity. God. And they make your ways of understanding porous. That you believe things you ought not to believe. So the seventh one got married to the same woman. And the seventh one died. You know, look at the thing. The Bible says after the seventh one died, then the woman now died. Assignment completed. Oh, oh, it's in your Bible. Read your Bible. It says, after all, after the death of the seventh one, then the woman died. Why didn't she die when the first one died? Why didn't she die when the second one died? Hmm. Why didn't she die when the third one died? Why didn't she die when the fourth one died? The spirit of the pattern in the family brought her. He said, now you have succeeded. Have, you, you have finished my appointment and my assignment. You cannot die. But I want to prophesy on you. I will see. Every pattern from your father's foundation. Amen. Waiting to kill you how he has killed others in your family. Oh I prophesy that you will escape it. Amen. I prophesy that you will break out Amen. of it. You will break out of it. Amen. You will escape it. You will Amen. break out of it. Amen. Hear me, Accra Ghana. I came to speak by divine revelation. Amen. It doesn't matter the pattern that is behind it. I came with a supernatural mandate. Yes, I came with a supernatural revelation. Yes. I came to speak over your life. Yes. I came to decree. I came to deal with the power in your father's foundation. I came to deal with the power in your mother's foundation. Yes. What stop your father will not stop you. What stop your mother will not stop you. Amen. What kill your brothers will not kill Amen. you. What your brother suffer, you will not suffer. Amen. What your mother suffered, you will not suffer. Amen. What your uncle suffer, you will not suffer. Amen. What your father suffer, you will not suffer. Amen. You are you are the one to break out. Amen. I say you are the one to break out. Amen. I say you are the one to break Amen. out. You are breaking out in the name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. I 
prophesy and I prophesy. The pattern is changing tonight. The curse is broken tonight. I manifest in your family. Your father's side are manifest. Your mother's side are manifest. I command every transgenerational curse, every transgenerational oppression by divine authority, yes. by the blood that speaks better things, hey. be exempted. Amen. Talk to me, Papa. Go Let to the me. pattern be cancelled. Amen. Let the pattern break. Amen. Let it break. Amen. Shut fire. fire. Do something, Papa. They will let you go. Amen. I said they will let you go. Amen. The power of the devil is our inability to understand. I revelation. The devil does not have power, but he has pattern. So he operates with pattern. And what is pattern? Take your seat. Pattern is a way of life. Now you see, there is a cycle that kills everybody in the family. The same way the first one died, the same way the second one died. Now, ladies and gentlemen, look closely to you. What you are suffering is not different from what your father suffered. Go and watch very well. Things that are happening, you see it as coincidence. It's not coincidence. I know there are wicked people. I know there are wicked uncle. I know there are wicked people everywhere. Yes, but until your foundation, give them go ahead, they can't deal with you. Hi. That's why people who go to witch doctor, when they go to witch doctor to deal with you, the, the witch doctor does not go into action immediately. The witch doctor doesn't just begin to perform the ritual that is demanded of him. You know what the witch doctor will do? The witch doctor will make consultations. And when he makes consultation, the, the witch doctor is trying to trace your umbilical cord. The witch doctor is trying to trace your foundation because until your foundation, that's why they, when they say, if, your, if the inside does not kill you, outside cannot kill you. Understand? So the power, he makes the incantation. He asks the spirit, where is this one lineage? Where is her lineage? Where is she coming from? Where is she coming from? What is the power that is behind whatever happening in his life? So they consult and the power shows up. He says, we are the altars, the powers of the father's house. He takes permission. He said, now, this is what we want to do to this person. And the altar of your father's house gives permission. He said, this one, you can deal with him. We're already dealing with him, but we give you permission to deal with him. Because why? The fathers, the, the, their fathers gave them to rest, but this one refused to continue worshiping us. So deal with him. So he said, but before you can deal with him, there is this sacrifice that our altars demand to make the attack easy. Mm. So what is the sacrifice? They make a demand. That's why you see some people, they say, go and get a goat. Some people, they say, get a ram. Some people, they say, get a white hand. They tell them differently. That is what your altar demands, not the altar of the witch doctor. So the powers of your father's house, the foundational power, raises wicked anchors. When we have the altar that is the devil, then we have the agent that is the human faces of the altar. The human faces of the altars, they work as weak, some wicked uncles, wicked stepmothers, wicked different kind of individuals the enemy is using to fight you. They have been set up in different places, both in churches, both in your place of work, but in the place where you live, they are everywhere. But by revelation, you see, when you cut off the head of the serpent, the body of the serpent will still move. Yes, but sir. the serpent has been bruised. Mm. So what we need to do, we need to bruise the head of the serpent. Then when you bruise the head of the serpent, you succeed in killing the serpent. What was the problem of this family? Foundational problem. Everybody were dying as if tomorrow will not come. What was killing them? There is a cycle in the family. You see, the powers in your father's house, they are wicked. Because two things made them wicked. Two things. Divinely is against God. And Satan has a strong covenant. Number one, let me retreat to this again. Every one of us, especially the African community, 
who came from a very, very dangerous background. Naturally. Before the coming of the missionaries, I said this yesterday, our fathers were used to nothing but worshiping idol. And remember, the scriptures cannot be broken. The word of God cannot fall to the ground. It says, thou shalt not make for yourself any graven image of anything in heaven, on earth, or in the waters, or beneath it. He said, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers unto the third and fourth generation. When you say fourth generation, fourth generation can be 200 years. But it doesn't mean that when the fourth generation ends, that the battle will end. Mm. Understand this. It doesn't end until somebody ends it. It doesn't end. God has chosen you to be the one to end it in your family. Amen. You are not here by accident. Yes, Something had to end in your family. Mm. That cycle had to end. Yes. So, he said, I will visit them up to fourth generation. No. If it's fourth generation, many of us will not go through battles anymore. Because 200 years has gone long ago. Start talking, Papa. You see, the people of Israel, you know what God told them? God told Abraham, he said, your children, the seed you will have from your loin. He said, they are going to be slaves in another man's land. For how many years? For 400 years. Now, read your Bible very well. The Bible said that the total years the people of Israel sojourn in the land of Egypt, according to Exodus 12 verse 40, it says it's 430 years. What are there the 30 years? Does that mean the word of God does not stand? No, the word of God can stand, but when there is no body to effect the verdict of his word, it doesn't stand. 400 years became 430 years. Why? Nobody, until Moses came to the scene. That was why he even ended in 430 years. Become the Moses of your family. Your amen is not anointed enough. Amen. This will happen. So God says on his own, he will attack any family where they worship idol on his own. He said, I will visit them. It's not, so it doesn't matter whether your father is alive or not. I told you yesterday that when God sees a man, he sees a family. When Satan sees a man, he sees a family. So the moment the covenant was entered into, do you know, for example, some of you here, you have told God because of the move of God, the presence of God, some things that are exceptional that God has done in your life. You, some of you have entered into covenant secretly, knowingly and unknowingly. And you said, as for me and my generation, we shall worship you for life. How many of you have said that before? How many of you have said that before? Put, put down your hand. Now, your father saw the things before the devil. And they also entered into covenant and said, my generation shall worship you for life. Mm. So by the reason of this, you have been implicated. By the reason of the covenant of, your fa of our fathers, there is a family register that was open. Anybody who is born into that bloodline, who came from that place of nativity, the person is registered. But tonight you will come out of it. Amen. Now, God is angry. And now the devil is also angry with you that you left the covenants your, your father entered into. What is covenant? Covenant simply means agreement between two or more persons. So covenant can cover people that are coming in 1,000 years to come. That's covenant. And now you have come to the church. You see, the power of the devil, the devil said, no problem. You want to go to church, I will let you go to church, but I will still make you useless in the church. No problem, you want to go to church, I will let you go to church, but I will still make you remain in bondage in the church. That's why people have come to the, to the point in their life where they are saying, are you sure there is God? Some people say, I have prayed and prayed. I have seen people giving testimony. When am I going to give my own? Covenant. So you know what the devil does? He says, I will let this one go to church. But while he's in church, I will still control him the way I control people in their family. The father was a drunkard. I, I used the spirit of immorality and drunkenness to control them. So you see somebody, the person is a Christian, but the person is a drunkard. You are in church. Your father was a polygamist. 
And when you grew up, you say, no, because of the things I see and the battles that came from polygamy, I will never marry. I will never be a polygamist. Now, it is not enough for you to say it. It's something to deal with. That's why you see yourself, you are married now, but you are practicing illegal polygamy. Because your father, he was, he was doing it legally, married many wives. You, you are in church now. You have one wife, but you got many girlfriends. Your own is worst. And another thing the power will do is this. You can say no. You see, you don't deal with spiritual issue by physical discipline. I say no. I will overcome this temptation. No, I will, no. He said, the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. So in other words, it is the spiritual that controls the physical. Are you sure you are hearing me? Yes, sir. You will break out of this battle. Amen. You will break out. Amen. That's what goes on. So, you see, what your father's altars will do is that he would bring, you can be a good man, and your father's altar will program a bad woman into your life. You can be a good woman, and your father's altar will program a demonic man into your life. You know why? There is a pattern in the family already, orchestrated by the covenant in the family. The covenant says no woman stays in the husband's, in the husband's house. So you get married. When you, you, saw, you might see the man in the church, but devil pretending to be a Christian. When you marry the person, you say, no, this is unbearable. God, I need to go. And if you are not careful, you enter into another one, the same pattern continues. You are not a bad woman. You are not a bad man. But what is bad is your altar. Your inability to deal with it, that is what is dealing with you. These things, they don't respect anybody. They can deal with anybody. You see, another thing, your father's altar, your father's altar will not stop you from prospering, you know, some people. It can allow you to rise. And when you come to the pinnacle of your success, he will attack you and you will crash to the ground. Have you seen people that were very, very wealthy before? But today, they are living in abject poverty. He allowed you to climb. You climb! You become nobody. Now, military men, footballers, pastors, men of God who rose at the pinnacle of their success, the power will show up. I'll give you a, a practical example. You know Moses? You know Moses? You know him? How many of you know he was very anointed? The issues of altar does not respect anointing. They respect the principle of understanding the operation of the anointing. Moses, very anointed. The Bible said, God confirmed, he said, this is the only prophet who can talk to him face to face. Now, the man, the man who can talk to God face to face, it means the man have ability to see into unseen futures. Look at the man. He work, fight all the battles. He fought all the battles, went into Egypt, said, Pharaoh, let my people go, and then divided the Red Sea. And when the powers were stubborn, he deployed different kind of things. He deployed the blood. He turned the, the dust into, into lies. He deployed frog to come. He did all, all supernatural. There were different, diverse kind of supernatural operation. And this man divided the Red Sea. And when it was time for him to enter the promised land, the powers in his father's altar struck him. Mm. <laughs> How many of you know he did not live to see the promised land? And the people of Israel did not see his dead body. You know who buried him? God buried him by himself. They didn't, see his, they didn't see his body. Do you see? At the pinnacle of his success, 
to enter worldly place and the place of rest, the power struck. And God said, hey, look at the promised land that you will not enter. Do you know this man? Talk of prayer is a man of prayer. In the history of the Bible, nobody prayed more than Elijah and Moses. Nobody. Nobody in the history of of Bible from Genesis to Revelation, nobody prayed more than, there were no more intercessor than more than Elijah and Moses. I'll prove it to you. Jesus was in the month of transfiguration. And Jesus was to face Golgotha. And Jesus needed intercessors, born intercessors that will hold him up in prayer. You know, it was in this season that Jesus prayed, the Bible said the sweat that was coming out, dropping from Jesus, it was like a drop of blood. So Jesus needed born intersection. And if you want, the Bible said it was Moses and Elijah who showed up. Revelation. It was Moses and Elijah who showed up. Remember, when they were giving analysis, when James was giving analysis, according to James chapter 5, he said, Elijah, the difference between you and Elijah is that Elijah is a man of, man subject to passion. That means he can get angry. That means he can be afraid of some things. That means he can be tempted. That means he can go through anything you go through. But the difference between you and Elijah is a man of, He's a man subject to passion, but the Bible said the difference is that he prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And the Bible said it didn't rain. And the Bible said he prayed again and rain showed up. And look at Moses. A time came, God was about to bring the race of Israel into extinction to kill them. And Moses stood between God and the, and the people of Israel. He said, God, if you will not save them, what is the essence of bringing them this far? It is better you kill me. Moses stood between God and the impending judgment was reversed. So this man, no, it was not Apostle Paul that showed up. It was not him. It was not Elisha. It was not Abraham. It were men born intercessor. So you see, you can be born intercessor, but if you don't take out time to deal with unresolved issues, they will resolve to deal with you. Hi. They will resolve to deal with you. Now, what am I saying? Now, Moses came to the promised land, saw the promised land, but never entered the promised land. Do you know many of you here, how many times you have struggled when miracle is about to happen, at the dying minute, something will go wrong. And they now give it a name. They call it near success syndrome. That is the English name. What about the spiritual name? You are close. You are always close to a miracle, yet you never see it. You are always close to getting married, yet it never comes to pass. You are always close. You, you, you get pregnant, yet you lose it by miscarriage. You are always close. You are always close to getting rich. You know people that are rich, wealthy people, people in big position that can help you over and overnight. But yet, very close, you never enter. Why? I'll show you why. Now, read Exodus chapter 2. Let me show you two things, then I'll go. Exodus 2. If any of my sons there uh, can help me, Exodus chapter 2. Uh, I need you to read for me um, verse number 1. And there cried, went a man of, her, of the house of Levi and took wife, the daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him that he was a good, goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she could no longer hide him, she took him an ark of bulrushes and dubbed it with slime and with pitch, and put the child there in. Now, maybe because of time, I'll show you that. Now, if you watch, there was a curse upon the Levite. 
If you read Genesis chapter 45, no time. There was a curse upon the house of Levi. You know the curse? There was a time their sister was defied. Do you remember? And they went out and they killed the man who defied their sister. And because of that, their father cursed them. He said, cruel, he said anger and cruelty are in your tabernacle. He said, you kill the man in your anger. Watch this. You kill the man in your anger. He said, for this reason, my spirit, my soul will not come into your tabernacle. For your tabernacle is cursed with cruelty and anger. Levi and his brother. I'm trying to show you the problem people go through where it comes from. It's not something new. It's something that has been there. Now, let's look at the origin of Moses, where he came from, who the father of Moses is. And you can see why Moses killed somebody and why Moses lost it because of anger. Go back to Exodus chapter 2 again. Read for me from verse number 1. And there went a man of the house of Levi mm -hmm. and took a wife, a daughter of Levi. Wait, there went a man. Hmm. There went a man from the house of who? Levi. And took a daughter from who? Levi. Who is the man that went out from the house of Levi? Please read it again so you can, they can see. I want, I want you to come to this understanding. And there went a man of the house of Levi. And took to wife a wife, a daughter of Levi. Uh -huh. And the woman conceived and bare a son. Mm -hmm. And when she saw him that he was goodly little child, she hid him three months. Excuse me. Who is this son that who is this son that was born? Moses. Huh? Moses. Where is the father coming from? Levi. Where is the mother coming from? Levi. Okay, let me use another language to qualify it. The daughter of violence went to marry the son of violence. The daughter of violence went to marry the son of violence. Can you see that? Now, now look at the problem. The Bible said, look at some contradiction you will not understand, but, but by the Spirit of God you will come to the understanding. Now the Bible said, it was God himself who declared that Moses is the meekest man on earth. Is it in your Bible? Yes, sir. He said, there is no man as meek as Moses. Now, the, a meek man means a man with peace, a man with meekness, a man that will never get involved in violence, a man who can control his anger. That was Moses. But do you know something? Where did, the, where did Moses get the heart to kill? Remember, an Egyptian, an, an, an Egyptian was oppressing the, an Israelite. You remember? And the Bible said Moses killed the guy. Where did he get the mind to kill? Just as his, his grandfather killed people, he too was a killer. Where's this coming from? Now, watch. There were so many incidents, so many incidents. One of the occasions, Moses was coming down. After spending 40 days with God. And on his way coming, he saw the people of Israel. The, he was coming with the Ten Commandments, the law, the tablets, stone, that God personally wrote by himself. When he came down and saw that the people had abandoned God to worship other, you know what he did? The Bible said he broke the tablet and grinded it and poured it into the water. Anger. Where did the anger come from? From his feathers. Look at him. He was close. After all the mighty miracles, he was close to coming into the promised land. And just very close to enter into the promised land, God said, Moses, your people are thirsty. They have complained about thirstiness. They want water to quench their thirst. And Moses, he said, yes, Lord. He said, speak to the rock and let water come out. And as Moses drew close to the rock, the people were insulting him. What kind of a leader are you? What kind of a man are you? You brought us out from, from Egypt where we have cucumber, we have watermelon, we have all kinds of these things. And you brought, out, you brought us out in the midst of desert. Is it not better that we died in Egypt? And there, 
the spirit of anger rose up again. Instead of him to speak to the rock, he struck the rock. And after then, God will allow you to do whatever you want to do. After then, he will show up and say, this is my judgment. Because you have opportunity to deal with it, but you refuse to deal with it. Then it came to pass. After that moment, God showed up. When God showed up, God said, Moses, come to Pisgah. And when he got there, he said, Moses, you see, look over there. He looked. He said, look well. He looked. He said, can you see something? He said, what is that? He said, look well. He said, yes, I can see something. What do you see? He said, I see a land flowing. I see milk here. I see honey here. He said, I want you to know on this account that I'm a God who keeps my word. I want you to see it. But you will see it. You will not enter. That was the end of Moses. Nobody ever saw the dead body of Moses again. I mean, nobody saw his body. That was how God killed Moses. Now, what was the issue? His foundation was the issue. There are two, there are two issues. You know, there are people, different things happen to them. Before I come back to Moses, I'll share this story with you. A lady traveled abroad in Europe. Now, from the family where she came from, I shared this story in Liberation City headquarters on Sunday. Now, the, the, the great-grandmother died of breast cancer. The grandmother died of breast cancer. The mother died of breast cancer. And she understand that this was a pattern in the family. And when there is a pattern, it's not ordinary. It is spiritually sponsored, programmed. And then, she traveled to Europe. She got married. They, they had three children. Then after that, he said, I'm done. Let me quickly go and cut off my breasts. Since the, or since the cancer in our family kills women through breast cancer. So when I cut off my breast, the cancer will have no breast to, to eat. No, this is, this is a true life story. I know the person. Watch this. You see, ignorance is a license to bondage. Instead of her to cut off the spirits, she was cutting off the breasts. Now she went to the hospital. She told the doctor the history. The doctor said, no problem. They cut off the breasts. And that was all. Two years later, she died of cancer of the liver and kidney. You see, it's a spirit. It will find a way to express itself. It's a spirit. And the Bible said the spirit of God is like a wind. You hear it, the sound. You know what? Know where it's coming from, know where it's going to. But there is a move, there is a sound. That's how the lady died. A certain lady. At the age of 37, a man came to marry her. Very close to the marriage. The man called her up and said, I'm no longer interested in this marriage. About three weeks to the marriage. She was so heartbroken. Two years later, at the age of 39, a man was very serious to marry her. And the man came, saw the family, paid her bride price. A day to their wedding, the man parked his car, crossed to go and get something. A car from nowhere hit him, and they died instantly. 39 years old. Then at the age of 41, she gave up that she was not going to marry again. Then there came this man. He said, don't worry, I know everything. I will marry you. I prayed. I prayed about your matter. And I'll be giving God ahead. Watch this. The man came to marry her. When the man came, the man did everything. Then there, there came the D-Day of the wedding. 
him and the woman, they were before the reverend gentleman. And while the reverend gentleman was about to join them together as a man and a woman, meaning husband and a wife, and there was this injunction, the clause that says, is there anybody here who has any reason why this man and woman should not be joined together in holy matrimony as a man and a wife? Speak forth or forever remain silent. There was a dead silence everywhere. Then all of a sudden, a woman rose up from the congregation with her three children. She said, he is my husband. He cannot marry. He can't marry you. He's my husband. And lo and behold, the man was married already. And that was how the marriage ended. And the lady came to the conclusion and said, no, it is better for me to die. I want to take my life. And then she came for deliverance. And it was on the process that the Lord revealed to me that her problem was from her foundation. And she's the only one this thing is happening to in her family. Here yeah, the problem was still from the foundation. I will show you how. The mother was giving birth to only female, female, female. And the mother had already given birth to six girls. And why she came to six was she was believing she was going to have a boy. She ended up having six, six girls. And in the quest, let's try one more. Because all these six, they are married. Let's try one more. And the woman got pregnant. When the day of delivery came, she went to the hospital. She was, being at, she was attended to by a midwife. In anticipation that finally a male child will come. She's been dreaming in her dream. She kept on seeing that she will have a male, ch a male child this time around. Now, when she finally, you know, was in labor and the midwife was, you know, asking her, you know, push, don't worry, the baby will be out. And when the baby came out, the woman was in a hurry to know what sex. And the midwife told her, congratulations, you just have a bouncing baby girl. And she turned and said, oh, no, not again. I don't want. From that moment, a pronunciation has been recorded. Mm. You know, Jesus said, everything you say will be used against you on the judgment day. That means every word, when it is spoken, has a record. That's why the Bible says life and death, they are in the power of the tongue. At that moment, when the word was spoken, it was recorded, and Satan began to use it. Because she has been rejected from birth. So anywhere she will find happiness, the enemy will bring rejection. Today I declare that every pronouncement that came the day you were born, yes. I command it to be reversed. Amen. Sit down. It was until while we were praying, the Lord said, she has gone for a lot of deliverance. Her problem is not deliverance. He said, we need to go back to the day when the mother said. You see, and the mother was very concerned. The mother will go everywhere praying for her daughter. Oh, what is happening to my daughter? Every other one is married. Why is this one not married? You see, the mother did not remember when such kind of pronouncement was made. The devil will not allow you to remember. Then it was then... I told her, there is a pronouncement that was made the day your mother gave birth to you. I told her what to do. She went into prayer. Then while she was on the, on the sixth day of the prayer, she had a revelation. In the, in the revelation of the night, she saw a woman giving birth, delivering a child, a woman in labor, and she saw the baby delivered. And she heard the cry of the baby. Then she saw a, a, a person, like a midwife, told the woman, the mother, that you have delivered the baby. And the mother, in the dream, abandoned the baby and said, I don't want Anton. Then she woke up. Then she now remembered what I told her by prophecy. She now went to the mother. She said, Mama, look at what, a man, what the prophet told me. What transpired the day I was born? It was then the, woman, the mother said, no, nothing transpired. Three days later, the mother remembered. He said, you know you are my last daughter. 
and I was giving birth to female, 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 I thought you were going to be a boy. So when you were delivered in anger, I said, no, not again. There was a rejection. The woman wept. They came back to me. And the Lord said, now deal with the issue. You know what the Lord told me? He said, go back to the day the girl was born. The day this lady was born. He said, go into that day and cause a divine editing that has been recorded in the records of the enemy. Yes. He said, cause a divine editing and remove it. You know, when you watch, when you watch film, video, with your remote, you can fast forward. Huh? And with your remote, you can also... Revive. Fine. You can rewind, right? You might have watched two hours already. You can rewind back to one minute. Am I correct? Now, in the spirit, it is more possible than the physical. I hear you, Papa. Then while I was praying, I deployed the spirit of God. Then I went into the day the lady was born. Then I saw a place. It was not like a, it was not a normal hospital. I saw just two rooms. And the room, the, these two rooms, it was controlled by a woman in a village. Then I paused back. I said, woman, do you remember the place you gave birth to your daughter? I described the house. And I said, in front of the house, they have a statue of an elephant. She said, yes. She said, that was where I delivered the baby. Then, then when I paused, I went back again to that building. Then I, I waited when the mother was about to deliver. We rewinded it back. Now, as the mother was to speak the rejection, I put it on hold. And when it, hear this, when it was put on hold, the Lord said, now at this point, you are not the one to do the job. He said, tell the mother now to change the recording because we are doing divine editing. Yeah. We are deleting what was put uh -huh. there. And are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. We are removing what was put there. And we are going to change another thing. At that point in time, it was deleted. Yes. And I said, mother, say to your daughter, I love you. I, you are the best. I love you the way you are. I love you the way I give back to you. Yes. And I love you. You will be the head. You will be the best. You will be the head and not the oh tail. You will not be rejected. You will be favored. Hey! Give it to a microscopic editor. Professor. And then, at that point, something happened. Something happened. You need divine editing. We will do some divine editing here tonight. Yes, Papa. You are not hearing me. You know, the Bible said through one man sin and death came. Yes. But through another man, righteousness and life came. Uh -huh. So there was a record. Jesus had to die to delete the old record. Yes. By the name of Yeshua Amashir, uh -huh. I caused every old record to be deleted. Amen. If you believe in Shadi, yes. Then at that point in time, the Lord says, seal it. I said, I declare today, lady, you are fine. Mm. You will be favored. And there was divine editing. Three months later, she got married. There was no complication. Hi!